you so much. Uh, as I mentioned in the morning, I wish we could be there in person with you, specifically for the long-term care track. I, I've always enjoyed and appreciated the opportunity to interact with. I, I, wanna, I know our very, very busy long-term care providers who are taking time of the, their schedule and joining these educational activities. I think I took more from it than, than any of the attendees. I, you know, so I, part of me wishes I could see you all, but I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, you know, we've met earlier this morning and Katrina and I have been working on long-term care stewardship for several years and we're, we're grateful to be here to share, to share with you some of what we've learned and support the work that you do. Um, Katrina, do you want to, next slide please. So neither of us have any financial relationships or disclosures. So over, over the next half hour or so, we're going to we're gonna discuss the framework for, and actions for implementing antibiotic stewardship in long-term care settings. I mentioned the core elements this morning and we'll expand with a little bit more specific, specificity to nursing homes. We'll identify strategies for tracking antibiotic use in long-term care and review opportunities to improve stewardship implementation in these settings. Next slide, please. Those of you who have listened to who've heard any of my or other stewardship uh, talks before have probably seen some iteration of this slide. I'm sorry, I'm just going to take one minute to close my email. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have seen some iteration of the slides where we mentioned that uh, antibiotics are frequently prescribed in nursing homes and based on different estimates, up to 70% of nursing home residents would be prescribed an antibiotic in a year. Frequently, those prescriptions are inappropriate. And when we say inappropriate, we don't mean necessarily that they should not be given, but that there's opportunities for improvement, whether in selection or duration or, or uh, whether those antibiotics are necessary at all. Next slide, please. So given the large burden of and the morbidity and mortality of COVID-19 in nursing homes, we fully understand that antibiotic stewardship has not been necessarily a priority for many of you over the last few years. However, um, with, the, with this um, educational activity resuming and many of you attending, we're, we're hopeful this, this is prioritized again. Um, we know that... <clears throat> Nursing home residents are particularly at high risk from adverse drug events from polypharmacy and antibiotics contribute to cl clinically significant drug interactions. Next slide, please. And the, um, the odds of an adverse drug events increase with the number of uh, scheduled medication. And one cohort study at two nursing homes, 13% of total adverse events were secondary to antibiotic use. Next slide, please. And in one study by oh, in around 2,000 physicians in Canada caring for older adults, they found that clinicians who prescribe higher rates of antibiotics are six more times more likely to prescribe other drugs at higher rates. And those drugs are benzodiazepine, opioids, and proton pump inhibitors. And this highlights the not only this, the risk for drug interactions, but that these prescribing practices can tend to go together. Next slide, please. Um, I think we... I think we may have skipped the slide. Can we go back one? Okay, next slide, please. Um, and just like the acute care core elements that we talked about in the morning, the nursing home core elements have been adapted to nursing home setting where every core elements uh, include specific examples that are apply only to these settings. And those would be leadership commitment, accountability, drug expertise, action, tracking and reporting, and education. And over the next few slides, we will review uh, we will review these different core elements and identify opportunities on how these could be applied to your settings. Next slide, please. So CM, um, you are all familiar with the CMS requirements to have antibiotic stewardship integrated within pharmacy and infection prevention and control programs. And the antibiotic stewardship program should include an antibi antibiotic use 
protocols and a system to monitor antibiotic use. And the interpretive guidance that was released is based and refers to CDC score elements of antibiotic stewardship. Next slide, please. First, we'll talk about the three core elements together, which is leadership, accountability, and drug expertise. Next slide, please. And, and leadership entails uh, not only, you know, I do have an example of a commitment letter here on, on, uh, on, on the screen, but that is leadership commitment is beyond signing a letter. It is dedicating the necessary human and financial resources to implementing antibiotic stewardship. And that can include several forms. That can include stewardship related duties and position descriptions of different staff, you know, statements of support and prioritizing stewardship is an important, but also giving the staff time to meet with program leaders, communicating with clinicians and reporting activities and outcome are all part of leadership commitment. And we talk about accountability because if no one is responsible for an activity, it's not going to happen. So appointing a champion to ensure that the program has the resources and support it needs to accomplish its mission. Next slide, please. And um, drug or stewardship expertise is, is critical, especially in long-term care, where stewardship is relatively new, unlike hospitals. And this come, can come in several forms, whether you're, you're partnering with your local academic institution or you have a clinical support within your staff or your medical director to provide that stewardship, or from a very important you know, part of your staff who are your consultant pharmacists. And I'm really grateful we have a session dedicated to the role of a consultant pharmacist today. Um, they can help with reviewing the tracking and reporting, in, ensuring appropriate documentation, help limit, you know, limit the duration of some antibiotic courses and provide education uh, and engaging in protocol development and policy development. There's, I mentioned earlier in the morning some of the materials that we had for hospitals, and here's a link for the nursing home specific material. Next slide, please. Um, and... Um, I'm, I'm, the slide is not coming across fully, but we'll make sure you have you have the full version of it in, in, the, in the sample that you receive. This is one example about the integration of leadership and providing expertise and engaging stakeholder. And this is an intervention that was led by um, by the by Dr. Renaud Dumiari, who will, who we are lucky enough to have today, and will speak after after this talk, and who led the Rochester Nursing Home Collaborative and with a paper is published at the link below and they've demonstrated how um, to provide expertise to this setting and how to best implement the core elements of antibiotic stewardship to improve antibiotic prescribing. Next slide, please. Okay. Yeah, I think it's an animation issue, so thank you. Okay, so next I'll hand it over to Katrina who'll talk to you about tracking and reporting antibiotic use and some of the work that she has led at CDC over the past several years. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. This is Katrina Gowan, and I'll be discussing the data sources to um, track and report antibiotic use data. So the saying, what gets measured gets done, underscores the importance of tracking antibiotic use in nursing homes. Monitoring and reviewing antibiotic use data is a critical first step for facilities to identify their opportunities for improvement. They can use their antibiotic use data to determine where to start and which practices they should be focusing on. And tracking antibiotic use can also monitor practice changes and demonstrate improvements in prescribing along the way. Although there are many challenges for tracking and reporting in nursing homes, there are multiple data sources that can be considered. Automated tracking of antibiotic use in nursing homes would greatly enhance the efficiency and monitoring of antibiotic use. And most nursing homes contract with long-term care pharmacies to dispense and deliver medications, provide drug regimen review and medication management, and they can generate reports on antibiotic days dispensed. Pharmacy dispensing data may be especially beneficial and attractive often for facilities that are supplied by a single pharmacy so that all medication transactions are captured in a single data source. Electronic health medication orders can also provide antibiotic use reports to facilities, although this option may not be universally available. 
Although automated reporting is more efficient, manual chart review may be the only feasible method for some facilities based on the resources available. These facilities can track their antibiotic use as a part of infection tracking. Progress is being made to address the utility of these different data sources from pharmacy invoices and EHR and medication order data to measure antibiotic use in nursing homes and underscores how it may serve as a useful approach to inform our stewardship of interventions. In the next slides, I'll highlight the principles and elements of tracking and reporting antibiotic use using these data sources. The key elements for tracking antibiotic use include resident characteristics such as age and gender. Important antibiotic characteristics that should be captured include antibiotic class and agent, route of administration, number of starts or courses, days of therapy, and course duration. Indications may not be available from all data sources, but should be included if it is available, especially in order to distinguish between prophylaxis versus treatment. Type of nursing home stay is especially important at the facility level when benchmarking facility antibiotic use rates. Short stay and long stay residents have different antibiotic use rates based on their timing of hospital discharge. In a study we recently published, we found that short-stay residents had a tenfold higher rate of antibiotic use compared to long-stay residents. The availability of these different data elements can vary based on which source you are using. One of the added benefits of using EHR data is that we can classify uh, the resident type of stay. Data elements can be used to calculate different antibiotic use measures, and many nursing home infection prevention control programs track new antibiotic starts as a part of their infection surveillance activity. Starts can be tracked by specific indication and can reflect the effort to decrease prescribing. However, antibiotic starts do not capture the duration of therapy, which is a low-hanging fruit for reducing antibiotic use. Furthermore, multiple antibiotic dispenses or orders can exist within long-term pharmacy records and EHR systems for a single antibiotic treatment course. We found that nearly half of antibiotic dispenses do not represent a full treatment course and must be collapsed into courses to mitigate overcounting of starts. Thus, to better capture a discrete course, antibiotic starts can be replaced by a number of courses to better capture duration. Antibiotic days of therapy is an important antibiotic use metric to track because it can characterize the total burden of use and better reflect efforts to decrease duration. Keep in mind that days of therapy can be skewed by longer antibiotic courses and long-term prophylaxis. As we described earlier, multiple antibiotic orders can be found for a single course, therefore tracking days of therapy may be an easier and more accurate way to characterize antibiotic use using these data sources. On this slide, I'll explain how to define antibiotic courses electronically. We developed a methodology to identify antibiotic courses by collapsing dispenses of the same drug to the same residence if the subsequent dispense was within three days of the preceding end date. In this example, Resident A received two separate dispenses of cephalexin with start dates of August 1st and August 4th. Because the dispenses were within three days, the dispenses are collapsed into a single antibiotic course instead of counting each as a separate antibiotic start. Collapsing these separate antibiotic starts into an antibiotic treatment course can better capture their duration. Course duration, which is also referred to as length of therapy, can be calculated using two methods. If date supply is provided in your data set, it is calculated as the sum of days of therapy for all dispenses in the course. It can also be calculated as the difference between the end date of the final dispense and the start date of the initial dispense. These antibiotic use data can be used to report facility level antibiotic use rates and evaluate our prescribing patterns by class and agent. Antibiotic metrics can be calculated and reported at specific time intervals to monitor progress. There are several important antibiotic use measures that we can calculate, including overall proportion of residents with an antibiotic, antibiotic use rates in terms of days of therapy and number of courses for 1,000 resident days, and mean course duration. 
these metrics can additionally be stratified by antibiotic characteristics. In an evaluation of antibiotic use in U.S. nursing homes, we analyzed long-term care pharmacy dispensing data for 2017 from 1,300 nursing homes, representing approximately 9% of nursing homes nationwide. The dispense level data consisted of all antibiotics dispensed to residents and included facility and resident identifiers, antibiotic class, drug name, date of dispense, and days of therapy dispensed. There were over 576 antibiotic dispenses that were classed into 324,000 courses. We use antibiotic prescribing data elements captured within the pharmacy dispense data to calculate antibiotic use measures that are accurate and actionable for tracking and reporting antibiotic use. During the year, we identified that 45% of residents received an antibiotic. In total, there were 324,000 antibiotic courses prescribed at a rate of nine antibiotic courses per 1,000 resident days and 3.3 million antibiotic days of therapy prescribed at a rate of 86 days of therapy per 1,000 resident days. In the bar chart on the right, we see the distribution of antibiotic classes by percent of total courses in blue and percent of total days of therapy in orange. And it's useful to see the data presented with both metrics so we can assess the most frequently prescribed classes by both days of therapy and courses and identify the focus for interventions that may be the most beneficial. And these types of data can be leveraged for dashboard reporting of antibiotic use at the facility level. In the histogram on the slide, we see the distribution of antibiotic course duration with percent of total antibiotic courses shown in blue measured on the left y-axis and cumulative percent of total days of therapy shown in the dotted orange line and measured on the right y-axis. The distribution of antibiotic treatment duration can be used to assess opportunities for improvement in duration of therapy. Over half of antibiotic course durations were one to seven days and the mean course duration was 10 days. However, 46% of courses were longer than seven days and contributed to three quarters of total days of therapy. Long-term antibiotic courses defined as those 30 days or longer contributed to just 5% of all courses, but 30% of overall days of therapy. Reviewing these data on antibiotic duration can help identify targets for improvement such as decreasing duration of therapy. If electronic reporting is not available, another option is manual tracking of antibiotics in the context of an infection tracking log. The data elements captured in this infection and antibiotic tracking tool developed by Brown University include clinical, antibiotic treatment, and prescriber information. Reporting antibiotic use and outcomes by providing regular feedback on antibiotic use is important for the success and sustainability of stewardship practices across healthcare settings. Provider-specific feedback with peer comparison on prescribing practices may be an effective way to change prescriber behavior and has been demonstrated in the outpatient setting. This is also performed in the nursing home. A nursing home example of peer comparison audit and feedback was conducted by the Public Health Ontario Research Group in which 1,200 providers and long-term care facilities were randomized to receive audit and feedback through a prescribing report. Antibiotics were added to the report and feedback was provided in the context of their prescribing of antipsychotics and benzodiazepines. The audit and feedback intervention found significantly less antibiotic courses were longer than seven days and there was no difference in antibiotic initiation. This type of report out example using for prescriber feedback demonstrates how antibiotic data can be used as data for action to improve antibiotic prescribing. Now I will turn it over to Sarah to discuss action and implementation of antibiotic stewardship. Thank you, Katrina. Um, so, We've, we've reviewed 
the leadership accountability and expertise. We've talked about tracking and reporting of antibiotic use data. Over the next few slides, I'll talk briefly about, uh, about stewardship implementation. Um, and implementing antibiotic use protocols and improving documentation um, is, is, um, is a key intervention highlighted in the CMS stewardship requirement. Um, if the eval documenting the evaluation, the communication, and in the changes of a clinical condition and suspected infection can help not only in choosing the appropriate therapy, but provides the key information when antibiotic need to be reassessed. Antibiotic protocols that incorporate treatment guidance for common nursing home infections that are that should be placed, placed on practice guidelines. And we're not going to go much into that as you have a whole talk after this one that Dr. Dumiati is dedicated to talk to you about treatment of infections in nursing homes. Next slide, please. Um, improving microbiology testing is important for treatment of infections. So developing algorithms for appropriate diagnostic testing and best practices, such as avoiding the test of cure per urinary tract or C. difficile infection that will detect colonization rather than infection, avoiding testing of, on admission when a resident is asymptomatic for the same reason, and avoiding testing for asymptomatic bacteria and the absence of symptoms are just some examples of, of microbiology testing practices that can be improved. Next slide, please. And we talked briefly that, uh, you know, sometimes a in stewardship intervention cannot, cannot change antibiotic initiation, but you can make a difference and improve prescribing and improve treatment of, of residents and decrease the risk of exposure by um, optimizing duration. And this is where the role of an antibiotic review or timeout is. Now here we show that this should be done at three days, but an antibiotic review can be done daily or can be done more frequently, where you reassess treatment after antibiotics start based on clinical response, the results of diagnostic testing to determine and whether an antibiotic is still needed, whether it can be stopped or, or adjusted. Next slide, please. There's more data that we know now about the optimal duration of therapy. Um, and, the com and the previous communication that we had that every antibiotic that course that is started need to be stopped, you know, we know more now that um, we should use the shortest effective duration, especially in residents who are stable with a timely clinical response. And there is increasing material available. So there are just a few examples here. One, one of the communication material that we have for pharmacists is on the right side and next to it is a communication about shorter is better and reducing duration for antibiotic treatment and long-term care developed by Public Health Ontario. Next slide, please. So, um, so the spectrum of the change in medical condition from no infection to infection is, um, is, is, can be challenging for many providers, especially in these um, older adults in long-term care where many things can look like an infection. And this is where um, that ongoing active monitoring, evaluation, providing supportive care and testing where you need to incorporate antibiotic stewardship principles. And for any successful antibiotic stewardship intervention to work, it has to be integrated into existing workflow of, of the nursing staff because it, it'll be challenging for with everything else that they're doing to add additional things and an additional step they have to do. So um, you know, one example is helping standardize the communication and documentation with frontline nursing staff and offsite prescribers. Next step, please. Um, we talk about communication with offsite providers, but communication is, is critical across transitions, as you all know. One of the main challenges we have is antibiotic prescribing that is initiated in a different facility or in a hospital before a resident is transferred. Um, it's important to track these in, in antibiotic use tracking and reporting, but um, it's that the standardized transfer forms can improve that communication when, when residents are transferred. Um, one example here is that CDC is focused on is 
communication across transitions and discharge stewardship. And this document here captures the key prescribing elements that ideally should be communicated when a resident is leaving a nursing home or when they're coming back. Next slide, please. And since communication is the theme today, I presented some of those materials in the morning, but the, this, is a, this is a toolkit that was developed based on communication principles developed in the outpatient setting and adapted to nursing homes to optimize communication with residents and families on treatment expectations. And those principles focus on re review or focus on improving the acceptance of the recommendations of the nursing staff by the residents and the families. And those are by delivering a clear, by reviewing the findings, delivering a clear diagnosis. And when an antibiotic, when the provider deems that an antibiotic is not necessary and they, an active monitoring should be done, it's important just the order of how that is communicated, where you first deliver a negative recommendation about what you're not doing, but then a positive recommendation of what you're actually going to do has been found to improve uh, acceptance and uptake of those recommendations. And at the end, providing a contingency plan of if things don't go according to plan, what are we going to do? I think that also we has been found to also help with. And there are two scenarios for um, for com what could be common scenarios in nursing homes that are associated with this one. Next slide, please. So, um, so as I was we were saying earlier, integrating antibiotic stewardship um, can help avoid delays in diagnosis and initiation of treatment of suspected infections. Um, and integrating antibiotic stewardship into, quality, into other quality improvement initiative can, can, can not only improve uptake of stewardship principles, but can help maximize the outcomes for the residents, such as uh, nursing homes who have initiative to improving evaluation and treatment of sepsis, making sure principles of appropriate therapy, follow-up, review, duration, and communication can help optimize the outcomes for sepsis and ensure residents are getting the treatment they need. Next slide, please. So we, you know, there is there is published literature and we've cited several studies on the effectiveness of antibiotic stewardship in nursing homes. Um, here, there are several systematic reviews that assess stewardship programs. And um, one common theme you find across all these said, all these studies is that interventions are often multifaceted. Like we do present the core elements as separate, but they are actually, you know, they actually, all these elements go together for a success, successful program, specifically education, which is the last core element. You know, frequently, every intervention starts with education and engagement, development of educational material, meeting and meetings and guideline implementation. But what we do learn from these studies is that most of them report a decrease of an overall or indication-specific antibiotic prescribing or improved guideline adherence as an outcome. The more important thing is none of them reported a significant change in mortality or hospitalization, which leads us to believe that this effort to improve treatment of infection is generally safe when implemented correctly. Um, next slide, please. So Katrina will talk to you now a little bit about some of the things we've learned on antibiotic stewardship implementation in nursing homes. You know, what are potential gaps and where can we, what, what can we do most to help? Katrina, thank you. All right, thank you, Sarah. So some nursing homes may be just starting with their antibiotic stewardship activities, while others may have been implementing antibiotic stewardship activities for several years. So the CDC's core elements for nursing homes includes a checklist that is a good starting point to assess our current practices, and it can serve as the gap analysis to identify areas for improvement. The CDC uses the core elements framework to assess antibiotic stewardship implementation nationally. So our team used the NHS Sun Long-Term Care Facility Annual Survey to assess changes in the uptake of the core elements in nursing homes. And we found the implementation of all seven core elements improved from 2016 to 2018. And in 2018, 71% of nursing homes reported implementation of all seven core elements. We also found that facilities that dedicated at least 20 hours per week to infection prevention and control activities 
we're also more likely to implement all seven core elements. While we recognize that staffing restraints and lack of time can pose challenges to nursing homes, the findings suggest that the integration of IPC with stewardship can have a beneficial impact on stewardship implementation. An additional data source that can be used to assess antibiotic stewardship and identify facilities for engagement is reviewing stewardship citation deficiencies that are captured in the CASPER database, which you are probably familiar with. These citation text data are publicly available from CMS. In fact, we have conducted a qualitative review of over 300 stewardship citations that were issued to nursing homes from 2018 to 2019 and categorized them under the core elements to identify opportunities for improvement in stewardship implementation. We found that among the randomly selected subset of citation deficiencies, action was the most common core element cited, with 67% of facilities falling into this category. These categories are not mutually exclusive, so citations could be classified into more than one of these categories. In the next few slides, I'll go over the highlights of gaps we identified in stewardship implementation and opportunities for improvement. Deficiencies in leadership and accountability were identified in one quarter of nursing homes with the citation. We categorized the citations into those related to antibiotic stewardship roles and policy. So for accountability, this often manifested as there being no designated person or infection prevention and control committee that was identified at the facility to lead, manage, or take an active role in the facility stewardship program. In addition, lack of accountability was also identified due to high rates of staff turnover and lack of stewardship expertise. Citations related to antibiotic stewardship policy included a lack of policy at the facility, failure to implement the policy, or staff being unaware that the policies existed. 57% of nursing homes with a deficiency in leadership and accountability had no stewardship policy available. And throughout these slides, we'll provide um, quotes from some of the citation texts to give you a better idea of how they're represented. As we saw previously, two thirds of deficiencies were for action related to antibiotic prescribing. And we identified four subcategories under action, which were prescribing protocols, criteria for initiation, reassessment, and review upon admission. Missing or not implementing antibiotic prescribing protocols was an important category that was evaluated. It can be described by this example. They did not include protocols on prescribing, documentation of indication, dosage, and duration of use of antibiotics. No documented indication or residents not meeting criteria for antibiotic initiation was also commonly cited. As stated in this example, the physician order did not indicate the reason the medication was being prescribed. Some facility citations included lack of antibiotic reassessment identified when there was no documentation that a drug was reviewed for appropriate drug dose and duration or diagnostic test results were not reviewed to adjust antibiotic treatment. For example, an order did not have a stop date or prescriber was not asked to change the order. Staff may not have reviewed antibiotics prescribed during hospitalization or emergency department visits upon readmission or re-entry to the nursing home. And one of the deficiency texts reads, the facility does not require surveillance to be done if the infection and antibiotic order occurred in the hospital. Deficiencies in tracking and reporting were identified in 40% of nursing homes, which included facilities that did not use an antibiotic or infection surveillance log or did not report out on their antibiotic use trends. The deficiencies in tracking were often identified when facilities antibiotic or infection surveillance log was missing or incomplete, and in some cases the facility failed to track infections or antibiotics had several months of data missing or failed to document information on the resident organism. So one quote is that logs did not include enough information to allow analysis of whether infections met criteria for treatment of antibiotics prior to being treated or information about the length of treatment. Finally, deficiencies in education were identified as lack of training for frontline and nursing staff, infection preventionists, physicians, and other staff in the nursing home. Surveyors found that staff were not trained on antibiotic use policies and protocols. 
we recognize that there are many barriers related to implementing antibiotic stewardship in nursing homes, including limited stewardship expertise, that term of and high medical complexity. When we used the citations data, we were able to identify some actionable opportunities to improve antibiotic stewardship implementation in nursing homes. We identified that all facilities should have an antibiotic stewardship policy available that highlights the commitments to program goals, accountability, and action steps to implement antibiotic stewardship. Facilities should implement antibiotic use protocols that include documentation of criteria and antibiotic reassessment. And nursing home staff should be trained to use the available resources and understand facility policy and prescribing protocols. We also identified resources that are needed to support nursing homes in these goals to improve antibiotic use tracking and reporting, ideally resources to enable automated tracking and reporting through electronic health records or long-term care pharmacy dispensing data would be implemented because as we discussed, manual tracking of antibiotics can be time intensive and susceptible to errors. In addition, training resources can empower nursing home healthcare professionals to interpret their antibiotic use data and identify where further evaluation is needed and opportunities for improvement exist. Speaking of training resources, there are several resources for stewardship implementation in long-term care settings, including the CDC's core elements and template policies and antibiotic tracking tools that nursing homes can adapt um, for their facilities. I would like to conclude with some key takeaways. Antibiotic stewardship is critical for resident safety, and there are multiple opportunities to improve antibiotic use. These can be identified through measurement by tracking and reporting antibiotic use to identify opportunities for improvement and to assess the impact and safety of interventions. In order to accomplish this, leadership and staff engagement are key components of a successful antibiotic stewardship program. I want to thank you for attending this presentation and we're happy to take any questions or hear your reactions. And if you have questions mm -hmm. after the summit, I'd like to contact us and can you check the email on the slide and mark your calendars for US Antibiotic Awareness Week in November. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Dr. Cavani or Katrina? Because if not, I do have one. Did everybody really pay attention to those? I have to turn this this way. Can I do this? Did everyone really look at those statistics as far as citations and all of that? So my question to you, Dr. Kabani and Katrina, when I read 57% really of those citations, I wanna make sure I'm clarifying this, no yeah. policy. Are there templates out there, anything available that we can help the individuals or, or organizations that do not have policies and such? Yes, no, absolutely. And, and this is, uh, I think we, we meant to highlight that better. Uh, one of the policies, one of the resources that we put together here for you is, is, a, poli is a template policy that was published in a manuscript in JAMDA that was loved by Dr. Jump, and it includes a template policy. So there is no reason for facilities to re reinvent the wheel. But one thing to be wary of, you know, that to make sure that what you document and what you have on record, for one, your staff to be familiar with it, because many times the citation was, they had a paper there, but no one knew exactly what was in it or what it was about. And two, if you can Commit to something and you have a paper policy that says you're doing it and the surveyor does not find evidence that you're doing it, that can be another cause of for a citation. So these are templates to be adapted. So pick from it what you think you can implement in your facility and make sure you have that on record and your staff is familiar with it. So no, but absolutely, the list of resources here that Katrina put together include you know, many links that can help with implementation, with tracking and reporting, and definitely a template policy. Thank you for that. Are there, oh, were you gonna say, yes. Go ahead, Dr. Asha. Thank you, uh, Katrina and Dr. Kabani. Um, um, really enjoyed the presentation. Um, one uh, question that I have uh, is regarding the use of NHSN uh, um, and the long-term care module. Um, um, 
do, do, do you think the use of the long-term care module can help with antibiotic stewardship activities also, or um, you know, is, is what are the reasons uh, for the uh, long-term care facilities to use those modules? Yeah, um, you know, we understand that um, the long-term care facilities during the COVID-19 pandemic were reporting their COVID-19 data, but that was slightly independent of the co of the long-term care module. Um, you know, as it stands, the long-term care module has several potential benefits and it is being updated and adapted. Um, there could be some benefit at this point, for example, with the urinary tract infection module, which captures uh, UTIs and captures antibiotic starts that are associated with them that could be reported. You know, it wasn't developed with stewardship in mind. In, that may change over time. There are modules that are now being developed for respiratory infections. So, as it stands right now, the long-term care module has several benefits to the nursing home for tracking their H and reporting their HEIs. There is some potential limited benefit for stewardship, but unfortunately, it doesn't capture all the data that they potentially need at this time. Um, you know, reporting your core elements and tracking those over time can help you. Assessing your facility practices when you report the yearly facility survey can potentially be helpful. Um, however, that is actively changing. As I said, many of the modules are being updated, new modules are being active, and we are actively working with, develop, with NHSN to develop an antibiotic use module that should be coming in the next few years. So the answer to your question, somewhat yes, but hopefully stronger yes in the next few years. Thank you. Are there any other questions? that, you know, um, Nebraska ASAP team um, can also help uh, to work with the facilities on, um, you know, uh, working on the policies, protocols, and things like that. So that's one of the resources that we have in the state that we can use. Yeah, and we frequently, you know, I think it's an oversight from us not to put that on uh, this on our list, but we frequently, you know, point to to the work that are that the state health department in Nebraska has done, for examples of successful implementation and engagement of pharmacists, and you know, we've I know Salman, we've asked you and your team to present on talks to other health departments with us. So, um, yeah. So, thank you. No, thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. 